Hello there, this video will go over how to install Kali Linux on a Chromebook without running. Kali Linux is popular with security specialists. Now if you are interested in Linux on a Chromebook, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on a Chromebook without running. We'll first start off with a freshly installed Debian container where we will install a text editor, edit the repository list, download the Kali software key, update Linux, download some software, and then create some launch scripts. If you have not already installed Linux on a Chromebook, then you may want to watch my install Linux on a Chromebook no running video and then come back to this video. Now after a fresh Linux install, we'll need to be online because in the terminal we are going to do sudo space apt space install space nano space dash y to install the nano text editor. When nano is finished installing, we are going to edit the repository source file so it points to Kali instead of Debian by executing sudo space nano space slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list. Here we are going to add a hashtag behind each line that starts with deb. This will comment out the lines so that they are just ignored. After that, we are going to add the Kali repository by putting in the line deb space http colon slash slash http dot Kali dot org slash Kali space Kali dash rolling space main space contrib space non dash free. When we're done putting that in, we can go ahead and press enter and then do control O, enter and then control X to save the file and exit nano. Now we are going to download the Kali software key by doing sudo space wget space https colon slash slash archive dot Kali dot org slash archive dash key dot asc space dash capital O space slash etc slash apt slash trusted dot gpg dot d slash cali dash archive dash keyring dot asc. Now this is all one line and this is the only time we'll ever have to key this in and you can also pause the video if you need to. When we are ready we can press enter to download the software key. Next we are going to update the system so that it switches to cali. To do that, we first have to do sudo space apt space update space dash y to update the list of available packages. After that, we can then do sudo space apt space full dash upgrade space dash y. This will upgrade the system by removing, installing, and upgrading packages and is also what turns Debian into Kali. Generally, software that will run on Debian-derived distros such as Kali will generally run on Debian and vice versa. Now we are going to install some software. For our first install, we will do sudo space apt space install space Kali dash defaults space dash y. This will give various default settings in Kali. Next, we will do sudo space apt space install space Kali dash desktop dash xfce space dash y. This is the xfce desktop for Kali Linux. After that, we will do sudo space apt space install space synaptic space dash y. This is for installing software in a GUI based interface. Lastly, we will do sudo space apt space install space x server dash zephyr space dash y. This is what we will use to hold the desktop together. Now we are going to create a script to run Kali Linux in an XFCE desktop. To do that, we are going to do sudo space nano space slash usr slash bin slash go x. This will create a file named gox in the slash user slash bin file path. Gox is just the name of the file and can be named whatever you would like. 
for the first line, we will input Zephyr starting with a capital X space dash BR space dash full screen space dash resizable space colon 20 space ampersand. The word resizable is purposely spelled wrong with an extra E in the middle. Now this line will create a nested X server, which is what the desktop will run in. The ampersand at the end of the line will make it run in the background. For the next line, we are going to put sleep space 5. This will give time for the nested X server to start up. Now you can adjust the time or leave this out if you would like. For the last line, we will put in sudo space dash u space your user ID space display in all capital letters is equal to colon 20 space start xfce4 space ampersand greater than space slash dev slash null space ampersand. Your user ID is the name before the at penguin in the terminal. Now the sudo dash u user ID display equal to colon 20 start xfc4 is what will run the desktop and the ampersand greater than slash dev slash null deletes the output which includes both standard and error messages. You can leave this out if you would like to see those messages. We are now done creating the script so we can press enter and then do control O, enter, and then control X to save the file and exit nano. All we have left to do now with the script is to make it executable by doing sudo space chmod space plus x space slash usr slash bin slash go x. We are now going to make one more script that will give us the ability to run synaptic by doing sudo space nano space slash usr slash bin slash go syn to create a file named go syn in the slash user slash bin file path. Again, you can name the file whatever you would like. For the first line, we are going to put in xhost space plus space ampersand ampersand. The xhost space plus allows the commands that follow to run a GUI session with root permissions. The ampersand ampersand makes the script wait until the command on that line is done. For the second line, we will input sudo space synaptic space ampersand ampersand. The sudo space synaptic run synaptic with root permissions. For the third and final line, we will put in xhost space dash. The xhost space dash will not allow commands that follow to run a GUI session with root permissions. Now that we are done creating the script, we can press enter and then do control O, enter, and then control X to save the file and exit nano. Just like what we did with the GoX script, we are going to do sudo space chmod space plus x space slash usr slash bin slash go syn to make the go syn file executable. Before we start up the desktop, we need to right click on the terminal app in the bottom shelf, select shut down Linux, close out of the terminal, shut down the Chromebook, restart the Chromebook, open up the terminal app again, select Penguin and wait for the terminal to finish starting up. Once the terminal is finished starting up, we can go ahead and execute the GoX script or whatever you named the script for running the desktop. We'll need to wait a couple of moments for the desktop to come up, but after a few seconds, we get an XFCE desktop running Kali Linux on a Chromebook. That's pretty cool. The first thing we're going to do here is edit the launch command for Synaptic so that it uses the go syn script, which will let us run Synaptic. To do that, we need to go to the menu in the top left corner of the screen, search for Synaptic, right click on Synaptic Package Manager, and select Edit Application. Here we are going to change the command to go syn or whatever you named the script for running Synaptic. After that, we can then click on the Save button. If we would like, we can add Synaptic to the top panel by going back to the menu, search for Synaptic, 
right click on Synaptic Package Manager and select Add to Panel. From there, we can right click on the Synaptic Package Manager from the panel and select Move and drag it wherever we would like on the panel. To drop it where we want it, we simply do a left click. Now we can click on Synaptic Package Manager from the top panel and it will open. Here we are going to install NeoFetch as an example of installing software with Synaptic. To do that, we first need to click on the Reload button to get the most up-to-date list of all the available software packages in Synaptic. When Synaptic is done reloading, we can then click on the search button and search by name for NeoFetch. When NeoFetch comes up, we can then right click on NeoFetch, select Mark for Installation, and then click on the Mark button for the additional required changes. After that, we can then click on the Apply button and then click on Apply again to confirm that we want to download NeoFetch. When NeoFetch is done installing, we can then click on the Close button and then Close Out of Synaptic. From there, we can then open up the Terminal Emulator from the top panel and then execute NeoFetch, where we will get a fun little display. Now, there's a couple of recommended configurations for the top panel, one of which is getting rid of the root Terminal Emulator from the drop-down next to Terminal Emulator, because the root terminal will crash the desktop like so. To do that, we just need to right click on Terminal Emulator from the top panel, select Properties, and then from there, select Root Terminal Emulator, and then click on the button with the dash in it, and then click on the Remove button to delete the Root Terminal Emulator from the panel. From here, we can click on the Close button to close out of the launcher window. Now, if you accidentally open up the root terminal, it's no biggie because all we have to do is shut down Linux, start Linux back up and start up the terminal, wait for it to finish starting up, and then execute the GoX script like we did before, and we will get the desktop back. The last configuration we'll want to make is getting rid of the logout and lock screen buttons because we shut down Linux differently on a Chromebook and the lock screen button appears to do nothing. To get rid of those buttons, we can either right click on the logout or lock screen button and select remove and then click on the remove button. Now there will be a line left over on the top right of the screen. It's called a separator and we can get rid of that as well if we right click on it, select remove, and then click on the remove button. For more documentation on Kali, we can open up Firefox from the top panel where we can see that there's a bunch of bookmarks for links related to Kali. First, we have a link to the official Kali website. Then we have a link to the documentation for various Kali tools, which is from the Kali website. Next, we have a link to the official documentation for Kali, which is also from the Kali website. Next, we have a link to the Kali forums, which again is from the Kali website. And then the last Kali link we have is the Kali NetHunter Pro for mobile devices. After that, we have a link to the exploit database. And then we have a link to the Google Hacking Database, which is from the Exploit Database website. And lastly, we have a link to the Offsec Learning Platform. Depending on the tools you are using in Kali, it may be necessary to manually open ports. We can do this in Chromebook settings if we go to the Advanced pull-down. And in the Developers section, we can click on Linux Development Environment and then go to Port Forwarding, where we can open up ports. Lastly, and for funsies, we can go to the menu and search for Kali-Undercover, and then click on Kali-Undercover, and our desktop is transformed. To get Kali back, we simply go to the menu in the bottom left corner, Search for Kali-Undercover again, and then click on Kali-Undercover, and we are brought back to Kali. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, The Chromebook Guide to Google Linux. And other than that, see you soon!